What's going on guys, Brother here back and I wanted to show you that I did go ahead and get Visual Studio code installed. So we're going to go ahead and close that and jump into the next lesson for now. And we are still in Foundations and we are on Command Line Basics. So introduction, feeling scared of the command line, you're not alone. We have this image of developers staring intently at a blank screen with white or green text flashing across as they wildly enter incomprehensible commands to hack into the corporate mainframe. No doubt while guzzling soda and wiping neon orange Cheetos dust off their keyboard. That black screen or window is the command line interface, CLI, where you're able to enter commands that your computer will run for you. While there's no need for you to reenact the scene above, working with the command line is a critical skill for you to learn as a developer. The command line is like our base of operations, from which we can launch other programs and interact with them. It has a syntax of its own to learn, but since you'll be entering the same commands dozens of times, you'll quickly pick up the commands you need most. In this introductory lesson to the command line, you'll learn how to navigate around your computer and how to manipulate files and directories, also known as folders, directly from the comfort of the command line. You'll soon see that this isn't as difficult as you may think. The commands you will learn in this lesson are very straightforward, so don't let the prospect of using the command line for the first time intimidate you. Test drive your terminal. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Open your terminal, terminal on your computer. Um, open the programs menu and search for terminal. You can open the terminal by pressing Control Alt T. And there we go, we got it. Um, before we do anything, take a look at the following text. Um, this is a terminal command because it begins with a dollar sign. The dollar sign is saying, hey, enter what follows in your terminal. This means that we must exclude the dollar when entering any command. In the above example, we would only enter who am I in our terminal. This is a common indicator, so make sure that you aren't entering dollar sign before a command. Now that you're aware of what dollar sign does, take your terminal for a test run. Make sure your terminal is open, type the command mentioned above, and press enter on your keyboard. All right, and it answered correctly. We're Britter. <laughs> um, it returns your username. Cool. You learn this. Why learn this now? You will be making heavy use of the command line throughout this curriculum, and the upcoming installations project will need you to install many different software programs using the command line. Additionally, you will primarily be using Git with the command line. More on this later. As part of the bigger picture, you may well be using the command line on a daily basis in your career as a software developer, making it indispensable skill in your tool set. Lesson Overview. This section contains a general overview of topics you'll learn in this session. Describe what the command line is, open the command line on your computer, use the command line to navigate directories and display directory contents, use the command line to create a new directory and a new file, use the command line to rename or destroy a directory and a file, use the command line to open a file or folder in the program. Assignment. Many of these resources assume you're using a Mac or Linux environment. If you did our previous installation lesson, you should have already installed Linux in dual boot or a virtual machine. Or you might be using Mac OS. If you don't have Mac OS or any version of Linux installed, please return to the operating system installation guide. Visit the UX cell sh course Unix shell course designed by the Software Carpentry Foundation. There you'll find a full complement of lessons on using the CLI, but for now just focus on completing the following lessons. Setup. Follow instructions and download file section only. This is all you need as you have, as you have the required software already. Introducing the shell, navigating files and directories, working with files and directories, pipes and filters. With your newly discovered CLI powers, practice creating a folder and a few files using the make directory touch and cd commands introduced in the previous step as an example a basic website might have a main index.html file a css style c sheet file called style css and a folder for images think about how you could create these files with the commands and put it into practice let's practice creating files and directories and deleting them you'll need to enter the commands for the steps below in your terminal if you can't recall how to open a terminal scroll up for a reminder Create a new directory in your home directory with the name test. Navigate to the test directory. Cre create a new file called test.txt. Hint, use the touch or echo command. 
Open your newly created file in VS Code and make some changes. Save the file and close it. Navigate back out of the test directory. Delete the test directory. That's it. You're done with practice. If you commit to doing most things from the command line from here on out, these commands will become second nature to you. Moving and copying files is much more efficiently done through the command line, even if it feels like more of a hassle at this point. Okay, so we're going to go back and check out the Unix shell, and it says to do um, setup. Install software. If you didn't already have the shell software installed, you'll need to download and install it. Open a new shell. Download the shell and move it to your file. To the move the file to your desktop. All right. So show all show in folder and let's move it to our desktop. Okay. Um unzip slash extract the file let your instructor know if you need help with this stuff um, you should end up with a folder called shell lesson data so let's how do I go back to uh, let's minimize all right so let's um, how do we extract extract here okay so we got that all right let's delete this and go back here all right if you didn't already have the shell software installed, you will need to download and install it. Um, so we already have this software. All right, so now we need to go back and go introducing the shell. Humans and computers commonly interact in many different ways, such as through a keyboard and a mouse, touchscreen interfaces, or using speech recognition systems. The most widely used way to interact with personal computers is called a graphical user interface, a GUI. With a GUI, we will give instructions by clicking a mouse and men using menu-driven interactions. While the visual aid of a GUI makes it intuitive to learn, this way of delivering instructions to a computer scales very poorly. Imagine the following task. For a literature search, you have to copy the third line of 1,000 text files in 1,000 different directories and paste it into a single file. Using a GUI, you would not only be clicking at your desk for several hours, but you could potentially also commit an error in the process of completing this repetitive task. This is where we take advantage of the Unix shell. The Unix shell is both a command line interface and a scripting language, allowing such repetitive tasks to be done automatically and fast. With the proper commands, the shell can repeat tasks with or without some modification as many times as we want. Using the shell, the task in the literature example can be accomplished in seconds. The shell. The shell is a program where users can type commands. With the shell, it's possible to invoke complicated programs like climate modeling software or simple commands that create an empty directory with only one line of code. The most popular Unix shell is Bash, the Born Again shell, so-called because it's derived from a shell written by Stephen Bourne. Bash is the default shell on most modern implementations of Unix and in most packages that provide Unix-like tools for Windows. Using the shell will take some effort and some time to learn. While a GUI presents you with choices to select, CLI choices are not automatically presented to you, so you must learn a few commands like new vocabulary in a language you're studying. However, unlike a spoken language, a small number of words, i.e. commands, get you a long way, and we'll co cover those essential few today. The grammar of a shell allows you to combine existing tools into powerful pipelines and handle large volumes of data automatically. Sequences of commands can be written into a script, improving the reproducibility of workflows. In addition, the command line is often the easiest way to interact with remote machines and supercomputers. Familiarity with the shell is near essential to run a variety of specialized tools and resources, including high-performance computing systems. As clusters and cloud computing systems become more popular for scientific data crunching, being able to interact with the shell is becoming a necessary skill. We can build on the command line skills covered here to tackle a wide range of scientific questions and computational challenges. Let's get started. When the shell is first opened, you are presented with a prompt, indicating that the shell is waiting for input. The shell typically uses dollar sign as the prompt, but may have use a different symbol. And the examples for this lesson will show the prompt as dollar sign. Most importantly, when typing commands, 
either from these lessons or from other sources. Do not type the prompt, only the commands that follow it. Also, note that after you type a command, you have to press the Enter key to execute it. The prompt is followed by a text cursor, a character that indicates the position where your typing will appear. The cursor is usually a flashing or solid block, but it can also be an underscore or a pipe. You may have seen it in a text editor program, for example. So let's try out our first command, ls, which is short for listing. This command will list the contents of the current directory. So we're going to do ls. All right, so we've got desktop documents, downloads, music, pictures, public templates, videos. If the shell can't find a program whose name is the command you typed, it will print an error message. Um, this might happen if the command was mistyped or if the program corresponding to that command is not installed. All right, Nellie's pipeline, a typical problem. Nellie Nemo, a marine biologist, has just returned from a six month survey of the North Pacific Gyre where she has been sampling gelatinous marine life in the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. She has 1,520 samples that she's run through an assay machine to measure the relatively abundance of 300 proteins. She needs to run these 1,520 files through an imaginary program called geostats.sh she inherited. On top of this huge task, she has to write up results by the end of the month so her paper can appear in a special issue of Aquatic Goo Letters. The bad news is, is that if she has to run geostats.sh by hand using the GUI, she'll have to select and open a file 1,520 times. If geostats.sh takes 30 seconds to run each file, the whole process will take more than 12 hours of Nellie's attention. With the shell, Nellie can instead assign her computer this mundane task while she focuses her attention on writing her paper. The next few lessons will explore the ways Nellie can achieve this. More specifically, they explain how she can use a command shell to run the Geostats SH program, using loops to automate the repetitive steps of entering file names so that her computer can work while she writes her paper. As a bonus, once she has put a processing pipeline together, she will be able to use it again whenever she collects more data. In order to achieve her task, Nellie needs to know how to navigate to a file directory, create a file directory, check the length of a file, chain commands together, retrieve a set of files, iterate over files, and run a shell script containing her pipeline. Key points. A shell is a program whose primary purpose is to read commands and run other programs. This lesson uses Bash, the default shell in many implementations of Unix. Programs can be run in Bash by entering commands at the command pr line prompt. The shell's main advantages are its high action keystroke ratio, its support for automating repetitive tasks, and its capacity to access networked machines. The shell's main disadvantages are its primarily textual nature and how cryptic its commands and operations can be. Okay, so we have completed the first part, and now we need to do navigating files and directories. So, um, the part of the operating system responsible for managing files and directories is called the file system. It organizes our data into files which hold information and directories, also called folders, which hold files or other directories. Several commands are frequently used to create, inspect, rename, and delete files and directories. To start exploring them, we'll go to our open shell window. First, let's find out where we are by running a command called pwd. So let's open this up, which stands for print working directory. Directories are like places at any time while we are using the shell, we are in exactly one place called our current working directory. Commands mostly read and write files in the current working directory, i.e. here, so knowing where you are before running command is important. pwd shows you where you are. So we're at home slash printer. <clears throat> Here's the computer's response is users Nelly, which is Nelly's home directory. Alright, so the directory path will look different. On links it may look like home slash Nelly. I wonder if we're in the same, if we're supposed to have. Um, Okay, I don't think so. I think um, I think I have this right. Okay, so um, to understand what a home directory is, let's have a look at how the file system as a whole is organized. For the sake of this example, we'll be illustrating the file system on our scientific scientist Nellie's computer. After this 
illustration, you'll be learning commands to explore your own file system, which will be constructed in a similar way, but not exact, but not be exactly identical. On Nelly's computer, the file system looks like this. Bin data users temp. At the top is the root directory that holds everything else. We refer to it using a slash character. On its own, this character is the leading slash in user slash Nelly. Inside that directory are several other directories. Bin, which is where some built-in programs are stored. Data for miscellaneous data files. Users, where users' personal directories are located. Temp, for temporary files that don't need to be stored long-term, and so on. We know that our current working directory, users Nelly, is stored inside users because users is the first part of, of its name. Similarly, we know that slash users is stored inside the root directory because its name begins with a slash. Slashes. Notice that there are two meanings for the slash character. When it appears at the front of a file or directory name, it refers to the root directory. When it appears inside a path, it's just a separator. Underneath users, we find one directory for each user with an account on Nelly's machine, her colleagues Imhoptep and Larry. The user Imhoptep's files are stored in users Imhoptep, users Larry's user Larry's and user Larry and Nelly's and user Nelly because Nelly is the user in our example here. Therefore, we get user Nelly as our home directory. Typically, when you open a new command prompt, you'll be in your home directory to start. Now let's learn the command that will let us see the contents of our own file system. We can see what's in our home directory by running ls, which we have, we already did. Oops, wrong one. All right, so that that's the directory of our thing. Again, your results may be slightly different depending on your operating system and how you have customized your file system. ls prints the name of files and directories in the current directory. We can make its output more comprehensible by using the dash f option which tells us to classify the output by adding a marker to file and directory names to indicate what they are. A trailing slash indicates that this is a directory. At indicates a link and star indicates an executable. Depending on your shell's default settings, the shell might also use colors to indicate whether each ent entry is a file or directory. So let's do ls-f. Okay. Um, here we can see that our home directory contains only subdirectories. Any names in our output that don't have a classification symbol are plain old files. All right, clearing your terminal. If your screen gets too cluttered, you can clear your terminal using the clear command. You can still act. You can still access previous commands using the up and down to move line by line or scrolling in your terminal. So let's try that. Yep. Let's try using the up. Yep, we can see all the stuff we ran. Okay, getting help. LS has lots of other options. There are two common ways to find out how to use a command and what it options it accepts. Depending on your environment, you might find only one of these ways works. We can pass a dash dash help option to the command available in Linux and get bash, such as bash. We can read its manual with man. We'll describe both ways next. Most bash commands and programs that people have written to be run from within bash support a dash dash help option that displays more information on how to use the command or program. So let's do ls dash dash help and see what that looks like. All right. Lots of information. All right, um, and here it shows the output. It's the same output that we have. Um, if you try to use an option that is not supported, ls and other commands will usually print an error message similar to this. The man command. The other way to learn about ls is to type man ls. Let's try that. Man ls. The command will turn your terminal into a page with a description of the else command and its properties. That seems pretty helpful. All right, to navigate through the man pages, you may use up, down, or to move line by line, or try B and spacebar to skip up and down by a full page. To search for a character or word in the man pages, use slash followed by a character or word you are searching for. 
Sometimes a search will result in multiple hits. If so, you can move between the hits using N for moving forward and Shift plus N for moving backwards. To quit the man pages, press Q. So let's press Q. Okay. Of course, there is a third way to access help for command, searching the internet via your web browser. When using internet search, including the phrase Unix man page and your search query will help to find relevant results. GNU provides links to its manuals, including the core GNU utilities, which cover many commands introduced within this lesson. Exploring more LS flags. You can also use two options at the same time. What does the LS do when used with the dash L option? What about if you use both the dash L and the dash H option? Some of its output is about properties that we do not cover in this lesson, such as file permissions and ownership, but the rest should be useful nevertheless. So let's try that. So let's do um, ls dash l. Okay. And ls dash l dash h. The L option makes LS use a long listing format showing not only the file directory names but also additional information such as the file size and the time of its last modification. If you use both H option and the L option, this makes the file size human readable displaying something like 5.3K instead of 5369 and as you can see that's what this did. So this is 496 MBs but this is just 4.0K which is very cool. All right, um, by default, ls lists the contents of a directory in alphabetical order by name. The comment ls-t lists items by time of last change instead of alphabetically. The command ls-r lists the contents of a directory in reverse order. Which files displayed last when you combine the dash t and dash r options? Hint, you may need to use the dash l option to see the last change dates. So, which file is displayed last when you combine the dash T and dash R? So, dash, the one that's going to be displayed last is going to be, let's do ls dash T. Dash dash R. So when you do ls dash R, the one that was most recently, the one that was most recently changed, the most recently changed file is listed last. Yes, we got that right. This can be very useful for finding your most recent edits or checking to see if a new output file was written. Exploring other directories. Not only can we use ls in the current working directory, but we can use it to list the contents of a different directory. Let's take a look at our desktop directory by running ls-f desktop. I.e. the command ls with the dash f option and the argument desktop. The argument desktop tells ls that we want a listing of something other than our current working directory. So let's clear this out. And then let's do ls-f desktop. Oh. lesson data. Note that if a directory named desktop does not exist in your current working directory, this command will return an error. Typically a desktop directory exists in your home directory, which we assume is the current working directory of your bash shell. Your output should be a list of all the files and subdirectories in your desktop directory, including the shell lesson data directory you downloaded at the setup for this lesson. On many systems, the command line desktop directory is the same as your GUI desktop. Take a look at your desktop to confirm that your output is accurate. As you may now see, using a bash shell is strongly dependent on the idea that your files are organized in a hierarchical file system. Organizing things hierarchically in this way helps us to keep track of our work. It's possible to put hundreds of files in our home directory, just as it's possible to pile hundreds of printed papers on our desk. But it's a self-defeating strategy. Now that we know the shell lesson data directory is located in our desktop directory, we can do two things. First, we can look at its contents using the same strategy as before, passing a directory name to ls. So, 
we're going to do ls dash f desktop slash shell lesson data. All right, and it shows us exercise data and North Pacific Gyre. Second, we can actually change our location to a different directory, so we are no longer located in our home directory. The command to change location to a CD, followed by a directory name to change our working directory. CD stands for change directory, which is a bit misleading. The command doesn't change the directory, it changes the shell's current working directory. In other words, it changes the shell's idea of what directory we are in. The CD command is akin to double clicking a folder in a graphical user in a graphical interface to get into a folder. Let's say we want to move to the data directory we saw above. We can use the following series of commands to get there. So we're going to do cd desktop, cd shell, lesson, data, cd exercise, dash data. Oh. Wait a minute. No such file or directory. CD desktop. CD desktop. All right, we done messed up. So Okay. Desktop shell. Wait, where's the. How do we know where we are again? Um, is it just LS? I think it's just LS. Let's try that. LS. Wait a second here. Let's go back. Bash LS, the prompt. So sure. LS is for short listing. List the contents of the current directory. Okay, so we're already in the desktop. So we can't change to that. All right. That's where I'm getting confused. Get back to where we were. Okay. So CD desktop, which we're there. CD. Oh wait, we're not in the right spot. Why don't we have the shell lesson data? Oh, we do. We're already inside of it. That's why we can't move there. Come on, Britter. Get your life together. All right, so now we just need to move into CD exercise data. Am I spelling that right? No, that's why I can't go there. All right, I didn't confuse myself for no reason. Data. All right, so now we should be there. These commands will move us from our home directory into our desktop directory, then into shell less and data directory, then into extra data directory. You will notice that CD doesn't print anything. This is normal. Many shell commands will not output anything to the screen when successfully executed, but if we run PWD, that's where we figure out where we are, PWD, <clears throat> After it, we can see that we are now in users, desktop, shell list, and exercise data. If we run ls-f, it lists the contents because that's where we are now. Okay. If we run, all right, that's what we did. Bash pwd output, which we got, bash-ls-f. 
and it shows us animal counts, creatures, numbers, text, proteins, and writing. We now know how to go down the directory tree, i.e. how to go into a subdirectory, but how do we go up? How do we leave a directory and go into its parent directory? We might try the following. CD show lesson data. No such follow directory. Why is this? With our method so far, CD can only see subdirectories inside your current directory. There are different ways to see directories above your current directory, your current location. We'll start with the simplest. There's a shortcut in the shell to move up one directory level that looks like this. CD dot dot. Oops, CD dot dot. Okay, so now we're out of the exercise data and into shell lesson data. Um, dot dot is a special directory name meaning the directory containing this one or more, more secondly the parent of the current directory sure enough if we run pwd we're back in which we are um, this special directory doesn't usually show up when we run ls if we want to display it we can add the a option to ls dash f so let's do ls dash f dash a okay a stands for show all. It forces ls to show us file and directory names that begin with dot, such as dot dot, which if we're in users Nelly refers to users directory. As you can see, it also displays another special directory that's just called dot, which means the current working directory, it may seem redundant to have a name for it, but we'll see some uses for it soon. Note that in most command line tools, multiple options can be combined with a single dash and no spaces between the options. ls-f and dash a is equivalent to ls-fa. ls-fa. Okay. In addition to the hidden directories dot dot and dot, you may also see a file called dash bash profile. This, usually, this file usually contains shell configuration settings. You may also see other files and directories beginning with dot. These are usually files and directories that are used to configure different programs on your computer. The prefix dot is used to prevent these configuration files from cluttering the terminal when a standard ls command is used. These three commands are the basic commands for navigating the file system on your computer, pwd, ls, and cd. Let's explore some variations on, these com on those commands. What happens if you type cd on its own without giving a directory? How can you check what happens? All right, so let's do cd. And then let's we'll do PWD. And so it took us back to our home. It turns out the CD without an argument will return to your home directory, which is great if you've got lost in your own file system. Let's try returning to the exercise data directory from before. Last time we used three commands, but we can actually string together a list of directories to move to exercise data in one step. So we're going to do CD desktop slash shell lesson dash data. Slash expert. I keep spelling exercise wrong. Exercise dash data and then PWD. And that's where we are. <clears throat> Check that we've moved to the right place by writing PWD and LS dash data. If we want to move up one level from the data directory, we can use CD, but there's another way to move to any directory regardless of your current location. So far, when specifying directory names or even a directory path as above, we have been using relative paths. When you use a relative path with a command like ls or cd, it tries to find that location from where we are rather than from the root of the file system. However, it is possible to specify the absolute path to a directory by including its entire path from the root directory, which is indicated by a leading slash. The leading slash tells the computer to follow the path from the root of the file system, so it always refers to exactly one directory, no matter where we are when we run the command. This allows us to move to our shell lesson data directory from anywhere in the file system, including from inside exercise data. To find the absolute path we're looking for, we can use PWD and then extract the piece we need to move to shell lesson data. So this one's a little bit confusing to me, but we're going to do PWD. All right. And this is the output exercise data. And then we do and run pwd and ls to ensure that we're in the directory we expect 
cd slash Where we are. Two more shortcuts. The shell interprets a tilde character at the start of a path to the mean the current user's home directory. For example, if Nelly's home directory is users Nelly, then data is equivalent to users Nelly data. This only works if it is the first character in the path. Here slash there slash tilde elsewhere is not here there users Nelly elsewhere. Another shortcut is the dash character. CD will translate dash into the previous directory I was in, which is faster than having to remember it, then type the full path. This is a very efficient way of moving back and forth between two directories. If you execute CD dash twice, you end up back in the starting directory. The difference between CD dot dot and CD dash is that the former brings you up while the latter brings you back. Try it. First navigate to Where are you should already be there? We're there. Then CD into the exercise data creatures directory. So CD exercise data slash creatures. All right. Now if you run CD, you're back in the lesson data. Run CD dash again and you're back in the creatures. Absolute versus relative paths. Starting from users Amanda data, which is the following commands could Amanda use to navigate to her home directory, which is slash users Amanda. Starting from users slash Amanda slash data. Um, Um, so we can use the CD, wait a minute, that's not even an option, CD dot dot brings you up and the ladder brings you back. So this one, number three. No? All right, so no stands for current directory, stands for the root directory, Amanda's home directory is users Amanda. This command goes up two levels. Yes, so five cd tilde. Um, this would navigate into a directory home. And this unnecessarily complicated but correct. So seven we wouldn't want to use. Eight shortcut to go back to the user's home directory and goes up one level. And so starting from users Amanda data, which of the following commands would okay. So CD home is incorrect. Tilde will take you back. And CD just takes you back home. So I should have just went with CD. Relative path resolution. Using the file system diagram below, if PWD displays users slash thing, what will ls-f dot dot backup display? Um, if users things what will ls dash f backup display um original pans penis i think Yes. Okay. Awesome. Got that one right. All right. Reading comprehension. Using the file system diagram below, if PWD displays users backup and dash R tells LS to display things in reverse order, what commands will result in the following output? Um... So... There will be uh, 
ls-r-f. Yes. ls without directory arguments list files and directories in the current directory. And yes, uses the absolute path explicitly. So both two and three would have gotten that. General syntax of a shell command. We have now encountered commands, options, and arguments, but it's perhaps useful to formalize some terminology. Consider the command below as a general command example of a command, which we will dissect into its component parts. <clears throat> ls-f prompts. ls is the command, f is the option, and slash is the argument. ls is the command with an option, f, and an argument, slash. We've already encountered options which either start with a single dash or two dashes, and they change the behavior of a command. Arguments tell the command what to operate on, e.g. files and directories. Sometimes options and arguments are referred to as parameters. A command can be called with more than one option and more than one argument, but a command doesn't always require an argument or an option. You might see sometimes see options being referred to as switches or flags, especially for options that take no argument. In this lesson, we will stick with using the term option. Each part is separated by spaces. If you omit the space between ls and dash f, the shell will look for a command called ls dash f, which doesn't exist. Also, capitalization can be important. For example, ls dash s will display the size of files and directories alongside the names, while ls dash capital S will sort the files and directories by size as shown below. All right. <clears throat> Note that the sizes returned by ls-s are in blocks, as these are defined differently for different operating systems. You may not obtain the same figures as in the example. Putting all that together, our command above gives us a listing of files and directories in the root directory. An example of the output you might get from the above command is below. Nelly's pipeline organizing files. Knowing this much about files and directories, Nelly is ready to organize the files that the protein assay machine will create. She creates a directory called North Pacific Gyre to remind herself where the data came from, which will contain the data files from the assay machine and her data processing scripts. Each of her physical examples, physical samples is labeled according to her lab's convention with a unique 10 character ID such as N. E N E O one seven two nine eight. This idea is what she used in her collecting log to record the location, time, depth, and other characteristics of the sample. So she decides to use as part of each data's file name. Since the assay machine's output is plain text, she will call her files any.txt and so on. All fifteen hundred and twenty files would go into the same directory. Now in her current directory shell lesson data. Nellie can see what file she has using the command ls north pacific guy. This command has a lot to type but she can let the shell do most of the work through what is called tab completion if she types ls so let's try this um alright so we're there and we need to go to out. Okay. The command is a lot to type, but she can let the shell do most of the work. And then presses tab key on her keyboard. The shell automatically completes the directory name for her. Pressing tab again does nothing since there are multiple possibilities. Pressing tab twice brings up a list of all the files. If Nelly adds G and presses tab again, the shell will append GU. Since all files that start with G share the first three letters characters GU. To see all those files, she can press tab twice more. This is called tab completion, and we will see it in many other tools as we go on. All right, key points. The file system is responsible for managing information on the disk. Information is stored in files, which are stored in directories, folders. Directories can also store other directories, which can then form a directory tree. PWD prints the user's current working directory. LS path prints a listing of a specific file or directory. LS on its own lists the current working directory. CD path changes the current working directory. Most commands take options that begin with a single dash. Directory names in a path are separated with slash on Unix, but the backslash on Windows. 
forward slash on its own is the root directory of the whole file system. An absolute path specifies a location from the root of the file system. A relative path specifies a location starting from the current location. Dot on its own means the current directory. Dot dot means the directory above the current one. Okay, so we have finished navigating files and directories. And then we have to do working with files and directories and pipes and filters. But I'm going to go ahead and do that on the next one because we're already at 45 minutes. So this video is going to be two-parter. But thanks for being here, guys, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.